There is a common thread that runs through the infamous names of Omni-Man, Homelander, Majin Buu, and Sean Strickland. They are all dangerous and unpredictable creatures with no regard for human life or emotions. Brash and vile, they will stop at nothing to achieve their twisted goals. Their actions have earned them the title of menaces. But let us not forget how it all began for Sean Strickland, the MMA menace, a dark past filled with violence and brutality lurking beneath his seemingly calm demeanor. But is that all that he is? Or is there more underneath the surface? Let's go back and see where it all started. Born into a hellish existence in Corona, California, Sean's childhood was marred by the constant threat of violence and abuse. His father, a dangerous mix of alcoholic rage and drug addiction, tormented his mother with beatings and death threats on a regular basis. In a candid interview with Ariel Helwani, Sean reveals chilling memories of hiding under his parents' bed, trembling in fear as he listened to his father strangle his mother while declaring that tonight would be her last. My dad. And so like one day, like, I fucking like army crawled underneath their bed and uh, <laughs> And like he fucking like he gets on top of my mom, maybe it could be rough sex, who fucking knows, right? He gets on top of my mom, like he's strangling her, and he's like he's like strangling her, like saying, Tonight's night you're gonna fucking die. And like and I'm probably like a third grader, I'm a young. And then I like the only thing I see is a guitar. So I go and I grab the guitar and I fucking just smack him in the head as hard as I can. And I grab the phone and I run out and I call the cops. And uh my mom, her dumbass, he fucking bailed him out of jail the next day. <laughs> Oh my God. I, yeah, so it wasn't, it wasn't like anybody could beat. It was more of just like fucking psychological trauma of like living this life. In a desperate act of self-preservation, Sean emerged from the shadows and attacked his father with a guitar, saving his mother's life, but not without enduring the trauma of witnessing such brutality. This harrowing experience left deep scars on Sean's psyche, leading him down a path of violence and hatred. He openly admits to developing antisocial personality disorder as a coping mechanism for his turbulent upbringing. As he delves further into MMA at the young age of 14, Sean finds an outlet for his pent up anger and discovers a disturbing sense of satisfaction in inflicting pain. But it doesn't end there. Fueled by his late grandfather's toxic influence, Sean falls into a neo-Nazi white supremacist phase during his formative years, a time that he now deeply resents and regrets. Despite starting his professional MMA career at just 17 years old, Sean has already lived through more darkness than most could ever imagine. In a way, he made his debut in King of the Cage and went on a tear, clapping nine opponents in a row. He finally got his hands on a shiny belt after defeating Josh Bryant for the middleweight championship, but he didn't stop there. He successfully defending the title three times before getting called up to the big leagues, the UFC. Stepping into the octagon for his first fight at UFC 171, Tarzan was ready to make a name for himself, and he delivered, taking down Bubba McDaniel with a rear naked choke in the very first round. Oh, another one. Yeah, he, he's caught him in that same space. For the, look at this, beautiful job taking the back. Nicely done. Bubba is in all sorts of trouble. 30 seconds. That is all over. Beautiful Sean Strickland. But let's be honest. Facing someone named Bubba doesn't exactly scream tough opponent. Regardless, Tarzan continued his winning streak against Luke Barnett until he finally met his match against Santiago Ponzinibbio at Fight Night 61, handing Strickland his first loss. He would go on to win three fights in a row and then face a future go. On a Saturday evening in April of 2017, he faced his greatest challenge yet, future welterweight champion Kamaru Usman. Throughout the match, he was clearly outmatched and ultimately lost by unanimous decision. Usman proved to be superior in every aspect of the fight. December 2018 marked a turning point for Sean Strickland, when his world was shattered in a deafening roar of screeching metal and breaking bones. His motorcycle collided with a reckless van, leaving him sprawled on the pavement, unconscious for what felt like an eternity. Countless doctors warned him against fighting again, but with the unwavering support of the UFC Performance Institute, 
he defied all odds and stepped back into the octagon. The accident tore his patella tendon to shreds, ripping away his dreams and forcing him into surgery. Yet Strickland refused to be defeated as he fought tooth and nail on his grueling road to recovery. Every step forward was a triumph over pain. Every punch thrown was a testament to his unbreakable willpower. Despite facing multiple injuries and setbacks, Sean was determined to pursue his dream. He proved his resilience by winning three out of four fights, and on November 14th, 2020, he moved up to the middleweight division. Yeah, Fight you for the center, Jack. Come on, bro, we're both boxers. Oh yeah, that boy. I knew I'd like you. Bro, you just can't fall. Why would you fall? Come on, Jack. Come on, Jack. Ten seconds, Jack. Five seconds, Jack. Right when Strickland started to gain momentum, it all came crashing down once again when he faced Alex Pereira. Sean has always been an outspoken individual. However, the UFC never highlighted the brash and menacing side of him. It was at this press conference where Sean started to gain the traction of the casual fans. Bro, your porn hub is just full of cartoons, bro. No man that beats off the cartoons is gonna beat me. Bro, Calm trust down. me. If Calm you ever, down. I can tell you what, if you win this fight, when we fight, I knock you out, I'm gonna do a TikTok dance over your grave. On July 2nd, 2022, the two fighters finally stepped into the ring. Sean Strickland, known for his predictable fighting style, decided to face off against Alex Pereira, a kickboxing champion with the touch of death. It was like watching a bear trying to dance with a hummingbird. Needless to say, Sean got knocked out in the first round, but he didn't care. He proudly admitted that he would do it all over again, even if it meant getting pummeled by a kickboxer. Well, that sucked. It, uh, you never want to be someone's highlight, but that's a game we play. You know, I tried to stand and bang with one of the best kickboxers. The, the shitty part about it was, you know, during the round, I kept thinking, man, this is going to be an easy fight. I see everything this guy's throwing. I'm getting the better of the exchanges. I'm going to beat this guy up for three rounds. And then halfway through, I got caught. So hats off to Alex. He's a fucking killer. Um, thanks to all my coaches. Saw where to get the win. It's depressing. I'm going to go fucking be sad for a while. And fans, thank you for supporting me. Uh, on to the next one. It's time to climb up the ladder again. Surprisingly, the two became buds and started training together afterwards. Who knows? Maybe we'll see the results of the training in the later fights. After losing a close and controversial decision against Cannoneer, he finally realizes that maybe he should just take a slight step down in competition. He goes against Imanov in January of 2023 and wins by unanimous decision. And then on July 1st, he faces Abus Magomedov. Abus starts off strong, trying to finish Sean early on. In the second round, Abus's cardio tanks and he gets TKO'd. Like, bro, how are you in a five round fight and you gas out Either way, this win is what propels Sean into his first title fight. In the highly anticipated UFC 293 event, there was a desperate search for an opponent for middleweight legend Israel Adesanya. The UFC tried to book Dracus and Izzy, but Dracus had an injury on his foot. So Strickland boldly stepped up to challenge Izzy for his coveted middleweight belt. Leading up to the fight, Sean threw some shade at Izzy's dog obsession. To Dude, there's a video of him like fucking jerking his dog off. I'm a fucking sure Jamie seen it, man. Ethnicity. Black outside, China inside. I am Chinese. I'm the Black Dragon. Questionable anime choices. No man that beats off the cartoons is gonna beat me. Everyone thought Sean was just a sacrificial lamb for the striking master, except for one. Sean Strickland's former opponent, Pereira, is the only person who gave him a chance. With impenetrable defense and a few well-placed punches, Sean dominated and shocked the world as the new champion. Looks like someone should have taken him more seriously. The stage was set for an explosive headlining fight at UFC 297 when Sean Strickland and Dracus Duplessis were announced as the main event. Both fighters had their fair share of trash talk leading up to the fight, but it seemed like Sean initially held a level of respect for his opponent after Dracus's impressive win over Robert Whittaker. However, during the heated press conference, that respect quickly turned into animosity, as Sean dropped F-bombs and Dracus brought up personal attacks about Sean's father. It's ice in a fucking angle. Like I Shut said, the that's the height of your career. You will always remember that fight. 
Go fuck your coach, you it. Bro, why are you so angry? Bro, you think your dad beat the shit up you? you, you, you your dad doesn't have shit on me. I'm going to show you what it's like to drag I mean, all, every childhood memory you have is going to come back when I'm in there with you. Every single one, the one where you lie in bed at night where your dad thing, comes man. in and he beats the shit I out of you. I will take your fucking soul, you understand, you fucking pussy? <laughs> Tensions were at an all-time high and both men were eager to get in the ring. But things took a violent turn during UFC 296, when Sean and Drakus were spotted in the crowd. In a shocking moment, Sean launched himself over the seats and children to brutally attack Drakus. This ruthless display left fans stunned and wondering just how far Sean would go to win in the octagon. It was clear that this fight was personal, and Sean would stop at nothing to take down his opponent. I guess Sean is just a menace. Or is he? Despite his reputation as a menace, is Sean truly the villain that society has labeled him to be? Many see him as a sociopath, a bully with violent tendencies. But is this really who he is? In a recent interview with Theo Vaughn, Sean opens up about his troubled past. I know, I, I couldn't stay awake in school. Like, so, like I remember I was like in third grade, or no, second grade, and I kept falling asleep at my desk. And my teacher took my desk away from me and she made me like, stand up the school system's like oh sean like he's just a bad kid they don't realize i'm up till three o'clock in the morning right. like dude i remember like laying in bed like i remember i stopped believing in god man like fucking <laughs> yeah i'm sorry bud so oh, man. <laughs> i'm sorry buddy that's all good dude <laughs> we don't have to talk man i can just sit here with you for a minute <laughs> It becomes abundantly clear that behind his tough exterior lies a man who has endured unimaginable hardships. From a turbulent childhood to facing numerous challenges throughout his career, Sean has faced it all head on. And despite the judgments and criticisms thrown at him, he has risen to the top. Of course, not everyone will agree with his actions and choices, but one thing is for sure, Sean is not irredeemable. At the end of the day, Sean is just like any other human being with his own share of pain and trauma. His words and behaviors may not always reflect his true self, he is a victim of his past experiences, trying to navigate through life the best way he knows how. So before we pass judgment on someone based on their public persona, let us remember that there is always more than meets the eye. Let us show compassion and understanding towards each other as fellow humans on this journey called life.